Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, time for another blind commentary. And today I'm doing something kind of a bit different. This comes at the strong urging of Shipping is Magic, who left several comments requesting this video, uh, which generally I don't actually like very much when you request the same video over and over again, because I see your comments the first time. I don't need to be told repeatedly, uh, because, I mean, your requests they don't stack. It takes like multiple people requesting the same video for me to actually uh, see it as like, yeah, there is a greater demand for it. Uh, but in this case, he he's made a pretty good case for it. And there have been other people who have kind of agreed with his request and have said, oh yeah, that would be a good thing to do. And it's gotten thumbs up on some of the comments. So I think there actually is a greater demand for this that uh, it's worth doing. And uh, apparently it's Halloween themed, which is another reason why I'm actually, like, why I actually consider this one. Uh, because I do kind of like having something at least kind of seasonal when there's like a holiday like this. Uh, and I couldn't really think of much on my own. So this suggestion sounded like it's a pretty good thing. It's the Nostalgia Critics Top 11 Gravity Falls Episodes video, uh, which will be only the second Nostalgia Critic video that I've reacted to uh, for my channel, or I put it on the second channel, but the other one was the Top 11 Worst Avatar Episodes uh, video, which I know you'll ask, so I haven't forgotten about the Top 11 Best video that I promised. I just... stuff happened, I never got around to it, and... Avatar really hasn't been on the forefront of my mind just because at this point that's going so far back That was like the first cartoon I ever react to other than MLP. So that that's just something that hasn't really been Something I've really thought about much and uh, I know I do see the occasional comment so I, I should get to that but I uh, <laughs> I've just been focusing more on stuff that seems a bit more relevant to what the channel is currently doing, I guess? I, I don't know. Uh, uh, but yeah, beside the point. Second Nostalgia Critic, critic video, and the first real Gravity Falls thing I've done in a while? I mean, that's not really exactly relevant to this channel at the moment either. Uh, kind of a series going back quite a ways now. Uh, but... Yeah, as said, it's apparently Halloween themed. I need a Halloween video and uh, it'll make at least one of my fans really happy. So this is probably a good choice. Uh, and generally speaking, I like the Nostalgia Critic. So uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what his opinions here are. Uh, what his favorite Gravity Falls episodes would be. Uh, don't really know what my favorite episodes would be if I could really uh, form a list. I think my absolute favorite is still The Last Mablecorn. Uh, but, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen every single episode, and I just don't really know how I'd compare them all. Uh, though, I think most of my favorites would come from Season 2. I think it's overall better than season one. The well, season one does have a lot of really good episodes, uh, like the Time Traveler's Pig and uh, yeah, Bill's first episode and uh, just a few other really standout ones like that. But uh, yeah, definitely eager to see what he has to say. So let's just go ahead and get this started. Okay, and here we go. And we got a city. Not really sure which one. And yeah, I guess we're going with a full-on live-action Gravity Falls intro here. <laughs> nice. I appreciate the effort. Not really sure who these other people are, uh, but I haven't really actively watched the Nostalgia Critic in years. So, I'm a bit behind. Nostalgia Ween. That was pretty nicely done. 
Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Yes. If you haven't noticed, I'm kind of a fan of Gravity Falls. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we got it. But <laughs> who can blame me? There's no bad episodes of it. Pretty much. The show about a boy and girl who spend the summer with their con artist uncle in a supernatural town has caught on like wildfire. Yeah. There's cosplays, Still pretty popular. fan art, fan fiction, disturbing fan fiction. Yeah, the show is touched a lot of that. With this hilarious writing, engaging story, and unforgettable characters. It's like Adventure Time meets X Files. There's no other show like it. Hmm. Except maybe Adventure Time and X Files <laughs> together. There's no doubt that this show brings back the nostalgic feeling of growing up in the 80s and 90s, mixed with the technique and storytelling of today's kids shows. Even if you're an adult, you feel like a kid watching yeah. Gravity Falls. So many great and moments here. This is the month of dark shadows, spooky creatures, and things that go bump in the night. We're gonna look at the top Just eleven. Bringing out all the disturbing stuff today. like that. Why top eleven? <laughs> because grappling hook. That's is the top eleven. All the reason you need. And nice hat switch. I, I definitely approve. Number eleven. Sock opera. Mabel comes yeah. across yet another boy pretty good one. she wants to throw her heart at. And it turns out, he's a puppeteer. So she wants to put on her own sock rock opera to win his attention. The downside is Bill Cipher, the silliest yet somehow also scariest creature, switches yeah. places with her brother Dipper and forces his body into that of a sock puppet. Resulting in not only a ton of funny imagery involving Dipper's new form. <laughs> I'm sorry, it, look, it looks funny when you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> but also a viewing of Mabel's not so subtle opera trying to possess the heart of another shallow fop. Yeah. Sorry, Mabel, but I have to go fight in the war. <laughs> <laughs> the song is I need to rewatch Gravity Falls. Surprisingly Voice. intense, and the idea is perfectly ridiculous. This poster alone is enough to make the episode. Wow, I've never noticed say, that. Except that... it'll definitely make you laugh your socks off. That <laughs> great poster. Number 10. Seuss and the Real Girl. Yeah. Everyone can get sucked in too deep into the digital it's a realm. But pretty sometimes good one. the digital realm can get sucked in too deep into us too. Seuss is trying to work on his love life and comes across a dating simulator game. The hmm. game's character, Giffany, or is it Giffany, <laughs> trains him to go out on a date, but then becomes Don't even too start obsessed that argument. and tries to date him in real life, sabotaging any chance he has for real love. The episode is great for showing the pros of the online world, but also the dangers of becoming too consumed by it. Seuss becomes too invested in his false pixelated reality, but even when he tries to leave the pixelated reality, that reality isn't done with him. What's what important, important is you don't have to talk in the real world ever again. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Sort of a red flag, but mostly awesome. <laughs> it's a real example, but nevertheless, it shows how unhealthy an extreme lack of social interaction mixed with engulfing yourself in a fantasy world can go. Yeah. Many people online suffer with this kind of dilemma, and in so many various ways. Well, this is Seuss's way, and he shows that you can start over again and make the best of reality. It just might take a few pixelated hurdles to get through. Hmm. I'm making eye contact, going on dates, and I haven't seen any natural sunlight for 13 <laughs> hours! <laughs> God, I love Seuss. Northwest Mansion Mystery. Oh yeah, Mabel's Pacifica. Enemy, Pacifica Northwest has been described even by the show as a one-dimensional character. But that I... suddenly changes when her family yeah. throws a big party leaving all the riffraff out, leading to a ghost haunting the place demanding that they be I think it changed a little bit this before that. This is times we see Pacifica and Dipper team up to fight the menace, leading to a Added dimension to her. sweet kind of romance. Though they never become a full-on couple, these two share an amazingly <laughs> likable chemistry. A lot of people do ship well it. work together, but in his, as well as our understanding, of what Pacifica's upbringing is like. There's a seriously uncomfortable series of sequences where her father rings a bell whenever yeah. she disagrees with him and she immediately silences herself, like a dog. It's legitimately unnerving every time it happens and it actually makes us feel sorry for a character that seemed like a comically simple antagonist. On top of that, the episode is gorgeous with popping Definitely. colors, heavy shadows, and visually strong layouts. It manages to be both funny and emotional over a character many of us never thought we would feel either for. Such a stick in a mug can suddenly be so complex and interesting. It teaches us that underneath all that shallowness, there might be something more fragile than we realize. Hmm. Yeah, that would be up there in my, like, top five. Number eight. A Tale of Two Stands. So much yeah. of Stan's background is a mystery. From yeah, where I love he grew the up, who he grew up with, and of course, how episode. honest he is. 
So much of his story, as well as the story of his family, is finally shown here, proving to be both comic and tragic. His ability to both connect very well, but also be polar opposite with the ones he loves most adds to the complexity of what originally seemed like a self-centered con artist. But as the previous episode on this list showed, everyone has a deeper side. It's nice seeing what made Stan who he is, both good and bad. This also starts the possibility of a rift between Dipper and Maple, hmm. wondering if their connection could be severed similar to how Stan's was with his family. I don't know if Not this even is gonna good mention or bad. Ford though, yeah. are we? I liked the way things <laughs> even though they showed him. Before. Seeing the parallels between them in both how well they got along, but also in how distant they can choose to be from each other, it's hard not to get emotionally invested in the future of what may happen to them. Definitely more of a serious episode, but certainly has a lot of laughs as well. Yeah. Complex and interesting, with just the right amount of laughs thrown in. You stay away from the kids. I don't want them in danger. Because as far as I'm concerned, they're the only family I have left. <sighs> Number seven. Boys crazy. With okay, own. I'm not sure I would have chosen that, but tickets to see their favorite boy band several times. It's a good episode. No, like that's our actual name. Several times. Again with a Z. Upon further inspection, they realize that <laughs> the boy not brand. Really the boy band is pretty hilarious. Well, sort of. They're actually all clones. So it's up to Mabel to free them and show how they can live. Just for how ridiculous life. they are. But will she be able to get them up when the <laughs> like time that. comes? Do her sweaters change every episode? <laughs> Not only does this one satirize the craze of the boy bands perfectly, but it even kind of mocks the ones that Disney made as well. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be more of an in sync Backstreet Boys kind of thing, but you know you get Jonas Brothers out of this too. Come on, you know you're all thinking it. The idea of the band being clones is clearly a commentary <laughs> on what many people have been saying for a while about boy bands about how they're all the same, with a corporate mastermind making only slight differences. Mm -hmm. Even with all that said, though, pretty it's much what Wendy says. Never too mean spirited. Just straight the boys out. are just products of the system they were created in, and they're still wide-eyed and kind to anyone who wants to help them out. I think it would have been so easy to go a meaner route, especially with some of the celebrities out there, but they keep it innocent while still funny. They even got Lance Bass to do the voice of all mm -hmm. the clones. That has to show this is being done in some good spirit. Super clever, but not overly mean. This is the episode to win any vulnerable girl's heart. <laughs> Mabel girl, we know you love us so. Number six. Weird Mageddon 2, Escape from Reality. Yeah, I Mabel like that. Is easily a favorite for most people, so it's no wonder Definitely that for me. completely ran and controlled by her would be Gotta amazing. Gotta love the Mabel land. Technically a prisoner of Bill Cipher, Mabel is given her own reality that is determined to make her happy, so she'll never want to leave it. The world is everything you would imagine Mabel would create. Super bright, super silly, totally insane, but also tons of fun. They even got a great cameo with Jon Stewart after he left The Daily Show, playing a strange cat judge. We are here to try Dipper Pines in the case of fantasy versus reality. It's Mabel's mind, what do you expect? <laughs> The episode also does well in rekindling Dipper and Mabel's fallen relationship, as they have to prove to each other the importance each plays in their uh -huh. lives. This helps add a little weight to what is an otherwise madhouse of goofiness. One that, like Mabel, many of us would never want to leave. Totally nuts, but also a hilarious adventure. What else would you expect from Mabel's mind? This world always knows what you want, sometimes even before you do. Apparently I wanted a chinchilla! Yeah. Number five, Fight Fighters. Yeah. All of us have either played or seen someone else play a popular fighting game, whether it be Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, the Capcom games, and so forth. Well, in this episode, all their blood-hungry cheesiness is brought to the limelight, as one of Dipper's games, Fight Fighters, is brought to life when one of the characters enters the real world. Now I must defeat the world's greatest fight fighters. Take me to the Soviet Union. <laughs> That's gonna be tough. For a number of reasons. <laughs> Everything about these awesomely corny games of the past wreaks havoc on the town, and Dipper tries to find a way to stop him before he destroys everything. The winks and jabs in this are just as funny as the, yeah. you know, winks and jabs in the original games. They could only be done by someone who loves this type of stuff. Everything from their inability it's definitely to an episode skills, for their gamers to and, cars, and their talent of absorbing people items who just are by walking over them. into and video the game references. Place it on the floor. Animation style, the voice acting, Gotta the equip your taco. Perfect. 
You won't want a cheat code to skip any of the comedy in this one. I said stay still. This is as still as I can stay. <laughs> Number four. Gideon Rises. Yeah. This was the end of the first oh, season, and good by episode. god, it feels like one hell of a big ending. Dipper and Mabel are forced to leave Gravity Falls after Stan's mystery shack is bought by their arch nemesis, Gideon. When Gideon doesn't find what he's looking for, though, he builds a gigantic version of himself to chase down Dipper and Mabel. It's as epically silly as you can get. The fight sequence between the three of them is so creative, so <laughs> large, but also so funny. You watched impressed, but also laughing at the same time. For a season that has such great moments both in humor and in scope, this is an episode that brought it all together. It was a completely satisfying climax to the first half of the show. And on top of that, it has one of the biggest cliffhangers ever. We finally see what's downstairs behind Stan's vending machine. Oh, yes. It's finally revealed that he knows more than he's letting on. Hmm. But how much does he know and what will it lead to? Of course, you have to wait until the next season to find out. And that but was finale, quite the wait for episode. a lot of people. It's huge in all the right ways. Number three, Summer Ween. Eh, you can't have this on a Halloween list without talking about the Halloween episode. Yeah, I Gravity don't know Falls if I would rank it that high. But... That talks about a lot of things Halloweenish, yet it takes place over the summer. So how can you do a Halloween episode? Well, it turns out the neighborhood loves Halloween it's so much episode, that they though. do it in the summer as well and call it Summer Ween. It's mainly the same, except instead of jack o' lanterns, it's jack o' melons. And it even comes with its own scary story. The trickster haunts anyone who doesn't have the Summerween spirit, and Dipper wants to skip out so he can go to a party with Wendy. It's up to the gang to escape this evil the entity moon. while also trying to keep the Summerween spirit alive. Almost any Gravity Falls episode can be seen as the Halloween episode, so even more care had to be taken to separate this from the others, and it totally pays off. From the costumes to the <laughs> cheap novelties to the traditions, it still stands as a very clear send-up to the holiday. It's a day when the whole family can get together in one place and celebrate what really matters. Pure evil! I yes. wouldn't dare reveal the story behind what the trickster is, but let's just say it's beyond clever and anyone who has ever trick-or-treated before can recognize and identify with it very quickly. With so many specials to watch around Halloween time, this is a perfect one to add to the list. <laughs> Number two, Weird Mageddon Three. Yeah. Take back the falls. Well, of course the final episode would make it on here. It's everything it's the show epic. has been building up to, and unlike some other final episodes, it not only answers everything, but it delivers exactly what we've been looking for. Don't know if it answers quite everything. For. The plot is very simple. They have to stop Bill Cipher from destroying the world. And that's about it. But the lengths they go to to make this battle as epic, creative, smart, and uproariously funny completely pay off. Practically every hmm. episode is building up to the end of the world, and this is pretty much how the end of the world, according to Gravity Falls, would go down. By paying homage to every other end of the world. From Mad Max to Walking Dead to the majority of heavy metal covers, it's every over-the-top extreme you can imagine. But it also has the emotional side. Hmm. It is the final episode, so that means every character has to say goodbye. And every one of them is given a satisfactory exit. <laughs> it really takes its time allowing you to let go of these characters you share some Yeah, it and definitely is with. good and with it that. it knows how to not go Return of the King on us and not overstay as well. <laughs> it's about as perfect a send-off for the show as you can get. Bringing the action, the suspense, and the hilarity. What a way to end. What's number one going to be? And the number one Gravity I Falls think I have a pretty good idea. Uh, not what he sees. Yeah, this one. You might be wondering why I'm putting this one over the final episode, which seems so perfect. Well, on top of this one being the first episode where gravity does fall, and also <laughs> one of the biggest and most sought-after reveals in the show's history, this is also the first time an episode made a lot of their fans actually second-guess themselves. Which for a TV show, especially a kids TV show, it's very difficult to it's do. It's a really well-written episode arrested and for apparently not perfectly being paced. Who says he is. We all know Stan has done a lot of wrong things in the past, but as Dipper and Mabel dig deeper and deeper, they discover his lies are part of a web that can never be untangled. The stories just get worse and worse, and Stan isn't really able to defend himself. All he can say is that you have to trust him, you have to trust him. A line he's used to trick so many people before. 
And with everything that this episode throws at us, we find ourselves, the audience, having a hard time trusting him too. What's so brilliant about this episode is that it completely makes us forget what's obvious. It's a main character, in a kid show, from Disney. They wouldn't suddenly turn him this unlikable or into a bad guy. W would they? With yet another apocalyptic climax, we find the fate of everything rests in the trust our characters have for their uncle. And one of them completely doesn't trust him, and the other wants to trust him even if she doesn't know if she can. It works because nothing but facts and logic from the show's environment are thrown at you, which completely makes you forget the facts and logic of your own environment. That Disney most likely wouldn't go the path with this character that you think they might go. Hmm. This sucks you in so much that you completely forget your better judgment and completely get lost to what's going on. It's one of the few times so much of the audience surrender themselves to the show. I don't think I, don't I ever know, doubted Stan personally. This. Because the fan art of one of the final scenes is everywhere. People hmm. remember this image of me yeah, holding her hands up because people remember how image. torn they were at this scene. They were completely with her in questioning that trust, which makes the moment all the more powerful. Wow. It was one of the only Definitely times a lot of fan art. Forgot we were watching a show with focus groups, strategic <laughs> Even more. writing, and statistical choices, and became lost to the world and the characters they presented us. They were real, and we didn't know if we trusted them. And we feared someone would make the wrong choice. Hell, we feared if we were in the situation, we would make the wrong choice. It's everything that made us realize why it was so powerful in one single episode. Hell, one single image. It was when it stopped being a show for many of us and became something much more real and much more special. Hmm. He makes a really good case for that, that episode. Missed? Well, leave them in the comments below and explain why they're your favorite. Hmm. I feel weird talking so positively for so long. If only there was a movie that one of the actors from the show was in that had a connection to Halloween and somehow used the word bitch a lot in it. No, no, I got nothing. No, no, no. Well, he's talking about some Freddy Krueger movie, uh, but I don't know... Not actually a big fan of that franchise, so I don't actually know who from Gravity Falls was in it. Coming next week is Freddy vs. Jason, well, there you the go. crossover we all thought we wanted to see. That's well, probably what he's referring to. Vessel's ad-free early access. Just three dollars a month to see tons of people's videos early, as well as a bunch of other extra features. Check it out and get the early scoop. Okay. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, that was maybe not as Halloween related as I was led to expect, but it was still a good video. And uh, it does work for Halloween. I mean, yeah, it's Gravity Falls, and uh, he mentioned Halloween. It was made for Halloween. Uh, but, yeah, the connection's just a little bit tangential and not really that direct. Uh, but, as said, still enjoyable video. And uh, what I really liked about it is how it really reminded me of what was so great about Gravity Falls and re really just how enjoyable and funny it was. And uh, I think he did present a pretty damn good list here. I, uh, it's hard to really argue with it all that much. But as he was saying at the start, Gravity Falls really has no bad episodes. So I think uh, for any fan deciding on a list of favorites, it's going to be pretty wildly different because everything is pretty great. So really it just depends on what appeals to you most. And uh, mine would be... Yeah, be pretty different from this, but uh, it would share some things. I mean, some things are hard to refute, not what he seems. And, uh, yeah, like the finale. Though I don't know. It might be kind of low on my top ten. Uh, and, yeah, uh, it was a good list, though. It was, uh, it was well presented. He's good at this. He's been doing it for so long that, of course, he's going to be good at making these now. And, uh... Like, just narrating his scripts. 
and uh, that editing was good. Uh, that intro at the start was pretty impressive. Nice, like, little parody of the Gravity Falls intro. Recreation, or whatever. I, I don't know quite what you want to call it. But uh, it was nicely done, and uh, yeah, gotta be impressed by that. Uh, and yeah, just overall, pretty good video. Don't really have too much to say about it. Uh, I don't know how great my reaction to this is. This kind of listing video it's always kind of a weird fit uh it seems in some ways though uh especially since it feels like i'm more laughing at the gravity falls clips than what he's saying in this one uh and it's stuff i've seen before i've already seen these jokes in gravity falls though it's been long enough that it's it's funny again it's like uh even though it's out of context uh but yeah i don't know uh though i still Hopefully you still enjoyed the reaction and uh, all that. Uh, and I think I think my what I do would actually work better with his reviews as opposed to his listings, just because uh, I mean those are more humor focused. Though even I guess if it was, if it was top ten, top eleven worst lists, I think that could work too. Uh, though for Avatar. Uh, yeah, it was still kind of this weird thing, because the bad episodes aren't even all that bad. So it was just sort of well-reasoned opinions on why they're not as good as the rest. Uh, but from what I recall, when I was really into him, he was at his funniest when he was just going off on something and just destroying it. So uh, <laughs> that would probably be what would work best for this. Though I don't know what he's done that I would really want to react to. I mean, uh, yeah, the... Last Airbender movie. I know people want to see me react to that eventually, maybe. But uh, other than that, not really sure. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. Hope you liked the commentary. Let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.